Hi there. All right, let's just go ahead and uh, hear from our Father before we begin the teaching, and that's according to 1 Corinthians 14. Uh, come to prophesy and speak in tongues. And so we're going to speak in tongues and interpret and prophesy. So whoever, uh, let me have a beginning word of prayer, or who would like to have a word of prayer first? I guess I will. I'll, I'll go. go ahead. And then after he's done praying, uh, go ahead and whoever feels inspired <coughs> to prophesy or, or speak in tongues and interpret, go ahead and do it. Yeah, well, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you and uh, go through your word and just discover new things, for you to open up the gems and the jewels and just for the revealing that you've done for uh, for us being able to have the freedom to have your word and to worship you, to worship uh, the things that you've done that you've given to us, that so we're able to know our promises and our glory. We thank you for that. We thank you, Christ, for paying that price, for making this available to us, that we have your authority and your power. We thank you for uh, everything that you give us, that you are uh, our head and we are your hands and feet and mouth and even the eyes that, uh, that, that you will direct us and show us. And we thank you for that. We thank you for the words that you put upon our hearts, that we speak these boldly, that uh, the price was high that you paid for us to be able to have this and carry this authority. We thank you for that and for uh, blessing Chuck and Wendy for opening their home, uh, for the food, for the message uh, to just be, in, um, just be on the tip of Chuck's uh, tongue as he speaks tonight, that, his, that your words are revealed through him. We just thank you for this through your son's name, Christ Jesus. Abena Shamuso Kanakana Shinisukoina Banina Sanukum Kanisuno Kats Nasana Shunusuko Nakanakoi. My children, you have um, hundreds of pairs of clothes. They all look exactly the same. It doesn't matter how much you have as long as they're all the same. Get different clothes, be different every day, do something new and um, learn new stuff every day. My children, you have to have joy to do stuff. You can't just do everything without joy. You need joy. Be happy. Never be sad. If you have a joy, you, you are. If always have joy, no matter where you are, no matter what happened, always have joy. Amen. 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 My children, take pride. Take pride when. You and I climb mountains, conquer conquer places that you have never gone. When you climb mountains, I am always there with you. And you're like, yay, yay, I did it, I did it. And I'm standing there like, seriously, we did it. So don't just give glory to yourself. Give glory to me, and I will reward you. To my sons and daughters, know that uh, uh, as you watch the seasons that uh, the old will fall and the new will come about. And so I call upon you to do the same things, to cast off the old, to let those things fall off and be gone away with, and the, the new will come through uh, to you. Know that I, I rise up those that are seeking, that want this, that those people who will stand in faith and come before me, that I will rise them up to do my will and to do the things I call. Do not stand by and wait for that, that calling to come. Come to me asking for how I can make this happen, that I will make this with you. For it is time for you to rise up, for I have called you. <clears throat> the question is, will you answer my call? I look at your heart, and I call you in directions that you are ill-equipped because I want you to need me more. Answer the calls. Answer the calls because we can do these things together. And know that there is victory. There's great victory right in front of you. I'm writing a wonderful testimony that's going to deliver many people, and I am the key to satisfaction. The key to the satisfaction in your future is, is, is within your hands. It's with me. It is, is with the calling that I've given to you. Nobody knows what you're supposed to do except for me. I put the directions inside your heart, and it is only between you and I. So you can look at other people, you can get counsel, you can get all these things, and, but nothing will give you satisfaction unless you obey what I've called you to do. Anasha Namasuku Do Zakinisha Imashukuta Zakinish. 
Children know that I am that still, small voice. I am always there, and I am always speaking with you, but you must listen to identify and, and, and learn to be still and silent while you're listening to me. Know that I am always here for you, and I have others to surround you as well in peace and in, my, in prayers. Know that I am always here for you, and just keep listening to my voice as we will, um, as you will identify it more and more. Know that the, in the in your very center are miracles. Walking with you are miracles. Every day your lives are miracles. There is nothing, absolutely nothing, that should not make you gasp with joy. Because I have blessed each one of you individually with many, many things. Look back, look forward, and look at the present and see. See with your spiritual eyes those things that I have blessed you with. And know that as you do this, that joy, that happiness, and that gratitude will come. Well, Father, we thank you for these words. Thank you, Christ, for being our head, that through you, we come to our Father, Ab Adonai Yahweh. Amen. All right. What a great way to start. I got your Bibles. Good. We're going to go begin in Genesis chapter 1. This particular subject is the Alpha and Omega of the sons of Adam, or Adam. Many times what we've got to do is, is kind of unlearn everything that we've learned and we go back to this book to see if what we learn is actually in there. And if it's not in there, we discard it, we discard it, we discard it. So we were born into a world with many, many doctrines. And, uh, and, and a great percentage of them are false. <coughs> And when we, we, the only way we can see if they're false is by going into this book, and this book will, will either verify what it says or contradict what it says. So, so if it contradicts what it says, then it's false. So we're going to look at mankind, and I was trying to think of the, the, you know, the, cu uh, the, the crux of the matter, but that's not really doesn't make sense. And, and what is all of life about? Now what is this from the beginning to the end? What is... <coughs> life about. And it's not necessarily Christianity, because Christianity didn't start until 2,000 years ago. So let's just start right off from Adam, or Adam, and Eve. So Genesis 1.21, or 1.26. <clears throat> when we're reading the Word, we've got to understand, too, there are two counts of creation, of Adam and Eve. There's one in chapter 1, and there's one in chapter 2. Most people don't even look at chapter 1. But we have to say, why did Yahweh give us two different accounts of making man? In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, And Elohim said, Let us make man, or Adam, and Adam is male and female. So Adam is, comes from the ground, which is the Hebrew word is what? Adonis. Adama. <clears throat> so Adam comes from the Adama. We are always a, a terrestrial creature. Our life has been the earth. And that's why the meek shall inherit the earth. So all this heaven stuff, living in heaven, going to heaven, people being in heaven, has no basis in this book. Let us make a dom in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the bird of the heavens and over the tame beast and over all the land and over every creeping thing that creepeth on the land. And Elohim created the man in his own image. In the image of Elohim created he him. Male and female created he them. There's the twins, male and female. And Elohim blessed them. And Elohim said to them, this is his commandment in the first uh, account. What is Yahweh commanding them to do? He's saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over all the fish of the sea and over the bird of the heavens and over every living thing that moveth on the land. That's it. So according to Yahweh, there is, you're going to live forever and there's no evil nature in you. So I'm not telling you what not to do. I'm just saying go do it. 
And if man had, uh, in, in that particular situation, chose life, then that's all he has to do. There is no don't do this because you're, you're just going to be doing this. Now we go to verse 29. And Elohim said, Lo, I have given you every herb yielding seed which is on the face of all the land, and every tree wherein is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, and to you it shall be for food. So we're going to see, guess what? Our qualifications are, we're going to be eating all of our lives. Many times we're thinking of spirit beings, and I don't know what they do. So messengers, I don't know what they do. If they, if they take in nutrients, don't take in nutrients, if whatever happens. But with us, we will, as we're going to see, we'll always be eating. We'll always be food because we're yes. different. And you're like, well, that's interesting too. Because most of us have a mind, I, go to, I die, I go to heaven, and I just kind of do things. And I don't eat. I don't picture myself eating or even necessary to eat and on and on. And that's not what the Word says. It says the trees are for food. Now the second, that, so the first account is in Genesis 1, and that is Elohim. The second account of man is Yahweh Elohim. So there's a distinction. And that begins in uh, verse, chapter 2, verse 4. We're not going there, but you look, and that's where the chapter should have probably began. Instead of chapter 2 beginning, at, you know, in, in verse 1, it should have probably began in verse 4. Now, here's the second account, in, uh, verse 7 through 9. So then Yahweh Elohim formed Adam of the dust of the ground and breathed in his nostrils the, the, the neshama of life, and man became a living nephish. nephish. And Yahweh Elohim planted a garden in the Eden, in the east, and there the man whom he had formed. And Yahweh Elohim caused to spring up out of the ground every tree pleasant to the side and good for what? Mm -hmm. So, so you know, we're always going to be eating, and so that's a revelation. And the tree of life, we all know about the two trees, and what is mentioned first is the tree of life. Well, let's just talk about the tree of life. Bollinger made a really neat observation, which I never thought about before. He says in his notes that, the tree of life is the tree supporting and continuing the life which had been imparted. What? So, Would you read that again, please? This tree is supporting, the tree of life, is supporting and continuing the life which had been imparted. So we think of eating it <clears throat> once and we're, we're done. Yeah. We have life. No, it's not that way. This is the tree for you to live age abidingly. We're gonna, but it's a continual eating. It's not a one-time, in my mind, it was always a one-time situation. And how we can kind of look at this, go to Revelations 22, because that's the last book, yep. <laughs> which is going to validate this. Is so, much, so much of this teaching is going to be being doing Genesis, the beginning, the Alpha, and the Omega is Gen and Revelation, is the end, which is really the beginning. So, uh, 22... Chapter 22 of Revelation, verse 1 and 2. And Elijah, you want to read that? Okay. Go ahead. And he pointed out to me a river of water of life, bright as crystal, is issuing. issuing forth out of the throne of Elohim and of the Lamb in the midst of the Broadway thereof on its side of the river and on that was a tree of life bearing twelve crops of fruit every several hmm. months yielding its fruit and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. You can see a continuation. This thing is blooming and being consumed all the all time. Months of the year. Yeah, twelve months out of the year. It's not a one time we take it, we're in heaven, that's the end of our terrestrial existence. No, we're going to be eating all of our life. Now we go back, uh, let's just, well, let, let's go back to Genesis. Three. 22, and this also validates this. 
now Adam, and that's how it's pronounced. So Adam can mean the individual man, or it can mean uh, both of them. Adam. Then said Yahweh Elohim, Lo, man hath become like one of us, so man has sinned, has become like one of us, in respect of knowing good and evil. Now therefore, lest he thrust forth his hand, and take even of the tree of life, and eat, and live to times age of body. And so this tree is what's going to give life. Always, if you're around the tree, you eat of the tree, you're going to live forever. Age of body life. They had to separate them so they would not, because we know it said, if you eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you're going to what? Die. die. If they <laughs> stay with this tree, what would happen? They're not going to die. They're going to eat. They're going to live forever. So it's a continual process. With Christ, and that's what we've got to realize with Christ, and there's a big significance. Uh, let's go to Luke 24. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Twenty-four. And I'm not going to necessarily wait for the kids. So we got a lot of scriptures to go. If you're there, great. If not, just kind of listen. Twenty-four. Twenty-four, verse thirty-three. And he is resurrected. Ninety. Now, page ninety. That's right. And, arri and verse 33, And arising in that very hour, they returned unto Jerusalem, the, the, two, uh, the two guys who were on the road to Emmaus, and found together together the eleven, and them who were with them, saying, In truth, the Lord hath awakened Egero, and hath appeared unto Simon. And they went on to relate the things that had passed on the journey, and how he was made known unto them in the breaking of the loaf. Now as these things they were telling, he himself stood in their midst, and you see the double brackets right here. The rest of it's not in the text. Go to 37. But being agitated and becoming afraid, <clears throat> they began to imagine that upon a ruach they were looking. Now it's very interesting because what you're going to see is, that, in my opinion, that Christ had a different face. And that's why they didn't recognize him. And what he's going to, how he's going to identify himself, he's going to say, my hands and my feet. Don't look at my face, look at my hands and my feet. They got the holes. <clears throat> he said unto them, Why are you so troubled? And for what cause do you reason? Do you reason is arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet. He didn't say, Look at my face. It's me, guys. <clears throat> handle me, uh, handle me, handle me, and see. <laughs> it's great. Come on, give me a hug. Because a ruach hath not flesh and bones, as ye uh, perceive, I have. This saying he point uh, the, the next verse is, is not in the text. Now while yet they believed not for the joy and were marveling, he said unto them, Have you anything to eat here? There we go right back to eating again. Mm. And they have, and they gave unto him a piece of boiled fish and taking it before them, he did eat. So you're getting to see in in uh, the Adam, we're going to be. Uh, eating always, and, and we're a, a terrestrial beings. That's not necessarily what the teaching is about. The big thing about this book is death. And so, if they would have never eaten of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they would have never died, we don't need a savior. And But death, in our particular minds, and as we've been taught, is not death. So we are taught that people don't die, they just change addresses which completely takes away the whole uh, you know, alpha and omega of the story of Adam. So you, what you have done is you have nullified this whole book by, by, by that concept, which is the majority, is the concept that people want. So now we go to Genesis 2, verse 9. And this, we handle the tree of knowledge. Now it's interesting, it's not called the tree of death. The result is death, but it's not the tree of death. I don't think everybody would have eaten if it's called the tree of death. <laughs> here's a tree of life, and here's a tree of death. Choose. <laughs> not, not, too, not too enticing on that. <laughs> but of knowledge, I still understand the significance of that. Uh, so that we go to 2, verse 9. <clears throat> and the end of it, we have the tree of life in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. 
And Rotherham on D says, a blessing and misfortune. So the same words can be translated, blessing and misfortune. And we know what the commandment is in verse 15. Okay, Isaiah, read verse 15. So Yahweh Elohim took the men and placed them in the garden of Eden to tell it and to keep it. Melania 16. Say it loud. And Yahweh got, I mean, Yahweh Elohim laid command on the man saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof thou shalt die. And how this really is said, in the Hebrew, the word muth, that's how you say death, M-U-T, is used twice. And so you'll see it in the Young's, it will say, dying thou dost die. Dying thou dost die. And he says, if you eat of this tree, dying thou dost die. And we've got to understand about death. And this is the whole facade that's been, 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 been cooked up. Death is death. You know, you're, I mean, if there's no resurrection, that's it. You're done. And so we have to know the significance of what really death is, that if there's no resurrection, there is no life. You enjoyed your 70 years, and that's it. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you die. And, there's, and that's really what animals do. So animals have, they eat, and then they die. And that's it. So the whole crux of this is, what did the sons of Adam get into? And since we're the sons of Adam, our parents, they sold us into slavery. No different than if, if your parents said, hey, I need money, and so I'm going to sell Elijah. And in certain countries, you can do that. You sell Elijah, and, and they get $1,000, and sorry, Elijah, and you're sold into slavery. Guess what? You're a slave. How do you become a slave? Um, if somebody comes with a thousand dollars and says, I want, I'll buy it back. That's called a redemption. I'm going to redeem you. Uh, pawn shops have that. You go to a pawn shop and you want money, you leave your, your thing there, they give you a hundred dollars, and you have 60 days to redeem it. They come back and give them the money that they gave you plus interest. And that's called the redemption. So now, Melania's under the ground, dead. And that's it. All right. But we're going to find out there's a Savior that's coming. But Adam and Eve did that for every man, every, every son and daughters of Adam is under the same curse. Death. Okay. And uh, yeah, so dying thou does die. Now we go to chapter 3, verse 2. And here's Eve with the serpent. And so we have death, and we have the serpent inter, 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 interwound, interwoven. And the woman said unto the serpent, Of the fruit of the trees of the garden we may eat, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim has said, You shall not eat of it. And it's always interesting, too. She didn't say Yahweh Elohim. And, and you will find out that... Uh, and this adversary can never say the word Yahweh. We'll also find out uh, demons do not say the word Yahweh. They can say God, but they cannot say Yahweh. They don't have the, the Who? permission. Who? Demons. demons. Oh, demons. Yeah, demons, and you, the adversary can never say Yahweh. So in any association where the adversary is talking and referring to the Creator, it's always Elohim. Hmm. I don't think he, has, he doesn't have that authority to use that word. And now Eve has got right into it because she just says Elohim has said it says, Yahweh Elohim has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not, and this is dying, you shall not die. So this is muth used twice again, just like in the first one. Mm -hmm. Dying, thou dost not die. For Elohim, see, he's, he says not Yahweh. For Yahweh Elohim, he says, For Elohim doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then shall your eyes be opened, and ye shall become as Elohims, knowing good and evil, or blessing and misfortune. 
And, and that is a situation. We've got into a situation where all of a sudden we are like Elohims. Animals usually don't have, in the overall picture, they don't have a choice of going wicked. You know, they're really a programming. You can have some dogs that disobey you and things like that, but there's never a situation where all of a sudden they just go on a tear and just start destroying everything as a whole. Only mankind has that ability. They can step into that, freedom uh, selectively, that freedom of choice of stepping into a place that, uh, that, that because you got freedom of choice. Let's see, 319, okay, so now we go to 319. And so the consequence of this, which we all know, is not your body, so everybody in, in the world is going to say, well, we're talking about your body. Because we're, we just can't, we can't fathom that. And it never says that. And right here in 19, In the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread until thou return to the ground, because therefore, therefrom, wast thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shall thou return. That is the fate of every mankind. And whether a person has ever heard about Christ, not heard about Christ, uh, born, not born, they're all dust. And so we have to say, we got a problem here. And, and death is, is something that we don't realize. With us, we handle death and we're around death potentially, and it really is not much of a problem. With Yahweh, it's a huge problem. So let's go to Leviticus, which is page 147 in the Old Testament, chapter 21. 41, Dad? 21. So, death and Yahweh. How does Yahweh handle death? And this is the priest. The priests were the only ones who were allowed to go into the holy and the holy of holies. The holy of holies is only for one who was the high priest once a year. For the holies, a priest could go in, but not the Levites. But the priest could. They had to be sons of who? Aaron. Aaron. Ah, so you have to understand there's a separation here. Why? Because Yahweh's presence there. Let's see what he says about death on the priest. What chapter? Chapter 21, verses 1 through 3. And when do you want to read that? <clears throat> and Yahweh said unto Moses, Say unto the priests, the sons of Aaron, Yea, thou shalt say unto them, For a dead person shall no one make him shall no one make himself unclean among his people, saving for his kin that are near unto him, for his mother, or for his father, or for his son, or for his daughter, or for his brother, or for his sister, a virgin who is near unto him, who belongeth not unto a husband. For her he may make himself unclean. He shall not make himself unclean, being a chief among his people. No, I'll stop there. It's one, two, three. But we see the priest, the only per dead person they could come in contact with was family members. Why? There's Yahweh and death again. Now we go to um, verse 10 and 11. This is the high priest. And as for the high priest, from among his brethren, upon whose head is poured the anointing oil, when it is installed by putting on the garments, his head shall be not bare, and his garments shall not be rent, and unto no person of the dead shall he go in. For his father or for his mother shall he not make himself unclean. So the high priest could never come into contact with any death. A dead person, a dead body. A dead person. Yeah. Now dead animals, yes. So we're talking about a dead person. Let's go to Numbers. That's page 179 in the Old Testament. Numbers chapter 19. Leviticus Numbers. Chapter there, sorry. 19. <coughs> There's a whole chapter on this. So you read the whole chapter of 19, and this is where the red heifer came in. Sins can be pardoned with burnt offerings and everything else, but if you touched a dead human being, it was a seven day cleaning procedure. So that's how removed we are and how, how Yahweh is so separated from death and in my opinion what we're going to see is when death entered this equation 
Yahweh is no longer personally in contact, I mean personally touching or anything else, I mean the ability with, with the sons of Adam. He's in the heavens. And so there's a separation now. Until, what we're going to find out is when death and Sheol are destroyed permanently, then he comes down to the earth. Because now there's no more death. And so that possibly explains that death is so severe to Yahweh that it has it is actually banned, he has been banned from the earth because of that unholiness. But that's my opinion. Numbers 11. <clears throat> he that touches the dead, even any human person, shall be unclean seven days. Wait a minute, where are you? It's 19. 19, five. verse 11. Oh, okay. 12, he shall cleanse himself from sin therewith on the third day. Then on the seventh day shall he be clean. But if he cleanse not himself from sin on the third day, then on the seventh day shall he not be clean. Whosoever touches the dead, the person of the human being that dieth, and does not cleanse himself from sin, the habitation of Yahweh hath he made unclean. Mm. That person therefore shall be cut off out of Israel. Because the water of separation, and that was the ashes of the red heifer were in the water of separation that they were supposed to be sprinkled with, was not dashed upon him. Unclean shall he be, his uncleanness is yet upon him. So it really shows us the severity of death, how Yahweh thinks about the separation that has just occurred. Um, the ending of death, Revelations 21. Last book. last book, second to last chapter. The beginning of the story, death entering by the rebellion of, uh, of Eve and Adam. And uh, now here's the end of the story, which is 21 verses 1 through 8. And Melania, read uh, verses uh, 1 and 2. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. <coughs> For the first heaven and the first earth have passed away, and the sea is no more. And the holy city, New Jerusalem, saw I coming down out of the heaven from El Yahweh, prepared... As a bride adorned for her husband. Okay, Elijah, verse 3 and 4. And I heard a loud voice out of the throne saying, Lo, the tent of Elohim is with men, and he will tabernacle with them, and they shall be his peoples. Let me just stop you for a minute here. Wait a minute. Uh, I thought people were already in heaven. Yeah. Let's just look at that verse now. Verse 3 again. And I heard a loud voice saying out of the throne, saying, Lo, the tent of God is with men. I thought men had already been there. Men have been there for 6,000 years. Nope. Right? In heaven. Mm -mm. Well, that's what man teaches. But it's not. They're not with him. And we will also see that in 1 Thessalonians 4, when it says, So shall we ever, I mean, so shall we ever, uh, what does it say? So shall you ever be with me. Yeah, but stay here. This is another subject. 19. Just stay. I mean, stay where you are. And I'm just going to look at something here. And so in Thessalonians, the living and the dead, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and after that we living are left, together with them shall be caught away in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air, and thus evermore with the Lord shall we be. Well, I thought the dead are already with the Lord. Yeah. And according to man's doctrine, they are. So it just, it's, it's just one thing after another after another, and that's what we're cleansing ourselves from. Okay, Isaiah, Elijah, 3 and 4 again. Okay. And I heard a loud voice out of the throne saying, Lo, the tent of Elohim is with men, 
and he will tabernacle with them, and they shall be his peoples, and he shall be Elohim with them, and he will wipe away every tear out of their eyes, and death shall be no more, and grief and outcry and pain shall be no more. The first things have passed away. Mm. And he that was sitting upon the throne, this is Yahweh, said, Lo, I make all things new. You know, so in the Bible movie where it says, I make all things new, they're saying, Jesus is saying that. No, it's Yahweh who said that. And he said, Right, because these words are faithful and true. And he said unto me, Accomplished. I am the A and the Z, the beginning and the end. And I unto him that is thirsting. And this is very important. I unto him that is what? Thirsting. Thirsty. Evil people don't want it. Will give of the fountain of the water of what? Life. Life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit these things, and I will be to him a what? Elohim. A God, an Elohim, and he shall be to me a son. Well, that's why we know the first part is Yahweh. Okay. But, and so there's always a division. But as for the timid and disbelieving and abominable and murderers and fornicators and sorcerers and idolaters and all the false, their part is in the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second what? Death. death. Well, we kind of be, we begin with death in Genesis uh, three, and now we have the second death, which is in which occur in Genesis chapter twenty. And the second death is where Sheol and, and uh, death are thrown in the lake of fire. That's, that's death, not second life. And so according to the world, everybody is immortal. You cannot die. Your body's the only thing that can die, which is so absolute uh, blasphemies what this book is actually saying. Now we get into the Redeemer, the hero, and that is the skeleton song. I need a hero. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden we're down, we're in the grave, we're under the ground, our families are gone, we're gone. Because of who? Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, because we inherited their sin. We need somebody to, who, you were sold, we need somebody to do what? To buy you <coughs> back, right? Mm -hmm. Redeem me to buy you back. And that's who we're going to see. And we know that's Christ. So we know that the, the sons of Adam's uh, destiny, the word destiny, is something that is guaranteed. And like what uh, Joe Wright said the other day, he says, you know, statistically, one out of one people die. <laughs> and he said, what are your, your odds? 100%. You're going to die. Unless? And so, so the destiny, yeah. But destiny means something, you know, when people say I'm destined, no, destiny means you have no control. Mm -hmm. We are destined to die. The sons of Adams. And, and, and to ever remain dead. So that's the point we've got to get out of our mind, to ever remain dead. Sold into slavery by Adam and Eve, or Adam and Eve, abiding in Sheol, which is the state of death. All of the sons of Adam need to be redeemed. And uh, so the sons of Adam really had two choices. Love thy neighbor as thyself or rebel against the Creator. Very simple. You love your neighbor as yourself or you rebel against the Creator. One thing about all of mankind, because we're going to talk about the people, we're going to talk about the people who have never heard about Christ. They never heard about the Bible. You know, they're on islands, and there's billions of people have never heard any of this stuff. You know, how many people in, in, uh, before Noah heard about, there's no written word. Mm -hmm. You know, Yahweh has imprinted in us two inherent things that, are, that, are, that we know. We know we, we want things, and so what we want to happen to us, we do to somebody else. That's called loving thy neighbor as thyself. You don't have to be taught it. It's, it's, it's burned in us. And that's what makes us accountable. The other thing is, we know in, instinctively that we have an evil nature. Because there's something inside us that, 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 that uh, tempts me to do the things that I don't want to do. 
And so everybody knows I've got to be delivered from something. Mm -hmm. You know, something is like having a parasite in me that's abiding in me. And so you don't have to tell any man on an island who knows nothing about Christ. Those two attributes they know. <coughs> so our Redeemer is Genesis 3.14. The seed of the woman. Promised. Isaiah, you want to read 314? Yeah. Then said Yahweh Elohim unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, a curse. Art thou above every tame beast, and above every wild beast of the field, on thy belly shall thou go, and dust shall thou eat all the days of thy life. And enmity will I put between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. So the seed of the woman is <coughs> Melania. You've been paying attention, haven't you? Okay, the seed of the woman is, I haven't told you. Yeah. Yahushua. Who's our redeemer? Yahushua. Yahushua. Okay, good. This is a trick question. <laughs> Just want to see if you're paying attention. <laughs> he, the seed of the woman is going to do what, Melania? It's going to save us. No, read what the verse says. On the bottom of 15. He shall crush, crush his heel. No, he shall crush thy the what? Head. 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 Whose head? The serpent's head. But thou shall crush his heel. So this is a combat. Who wins? The seed of the woman. <clears throat> the adversary loses. And, but does the seed of the woman get hurt? Mm -hmm. Yes. He's going to get hurt. Another thing that uh, here's interesting too about the adversary. Back in 14, uh, on thy belly shall thou go, and dust shall thou eat all the days of thy what? Life. 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 It doesn't say all thy days. Forever. Huh. Yeah, it, otherwise, it would say, all, it, you shall eat dust all thy days. Well, it doesn't. Well, days of thy life. And Good the days of our life is also to Adam and Eve too. Dust. There's a time where it's going to stop. Those are little notes unrelated. And we go to Isaiah 52. And we're going to see what the, the Redeemer is going to have to do because our predicament is that... Oh, let me ask you this. Okay, Elijah. The predicament is death. So your dad sold you into death. Now, for somebody to get you out, what's the price he's going to have to pay? Um, death. death. He's going to have to die. Your death, so you can live. That's, that's the price of the redemption. Ow. And that is in 52, verse 13. Page 698. <clears throat> Lo, my servant... Prosper it. He rises and lift it up and becometh very high. That's just how it begins, which is great. And we go to uh, 53, verse 7. Get right into the heart of it. Hard pressed, yet he humbled himself, nor opened his mouth. As a lamb to the slaughter is led, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, nor opened his mouth. By constraint and by sentence was he taken away, and of his age who considereth? That he was cut off out of the land of the what? Living. Living. Why? For my people's transgression did the stroke fall on him. Wow. And appointed with lawless men was his grave, and with the wicked his tomb. Though no violence had he done, nor was guile in his mouth. Yet Yahweh prepared to bruise him. He laid on him sickness. If his soul... And becometh an offering for guilt, he shall see a seed, he shall prolong his days. And the purpose of Yahweh in his hand shall prosper. Of the travail of his soul shall he see, he shall be satisfied with his knowledge. 
for setting right when set right himself, shall my servant win for the many. Since of their iniquities, he taketh the burden. So he's taking the burden of the iniquities. Therefore will I give him a portion in the great, and the strong shall your portion as spoil, because he poured out to death his own soul, and with transgressions let himself be numbered. Yea, he, the sin of many, bore, bear, and for transgressor interposeth. So that is what Yahushua was told, here's what you're going to have to do. And why? Because Adam sins. We go to Hebrews 2, verse 9. That's page in the New Testament, 224. <coughs> Verse 9. But Yahushua made some, some little less than messengers we do behold, by reason of the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, to the end, by favor of Yahweh, in behalf of everyone, he might do what? Taste of death. Taste of death. And so this is the whole thing. Okay, death is just all the way through this. And, and, and you know, the death, and then the Redeemer's death. And, and that's why the awakening from the dead is so paramount. Yeah. And which we'll get into. For it was becoming in him, for the sake of whom are all the all things, and by means of whom are all the all things, when many sons unto glory he would lead, the princely leader of their salvation through suffering to make perfect, for both he that maketh holy and they who are being made holy are all of one. For which cause he is not ashamed to be called their God. No. Brother. Brother. Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the assembly will I sing praises unto thee. And again, I will be confident upon him. And again, lo, I am the children which unto me Yahweh hath given. Seeing therefore the children have received a fellowship of blood and flesh. And really, I think we are like his children. When it comes down to it. Because without his accomplishment, we have no life. <coughs> So no different than somebody, you know, having eggs and hatching them. And uh, because you hatch the eggs, that's why you get all these chickens, and you're like the mother of the chickens. And so this is, would be like his children. And also like in like manner to the partnership of the same, in order that through death, and so here's the whole thing. You know, the penalty was death, and so to redeem the sons of Adam, you're going to have to go through death to redeem those. In order that through death he might paralyze him that held the dominion of death, that is the adversary, and might release these, as many as by fear of death, were all their lifetime liable to bondage. Let's go to Revelations chapter 1. So by his accomplishment, 1 verse 17. Now, he had to do this all in faith because nobody has ever been awoken among, from the dead never to die again. And this is what Yahweh is telling him is going to happen in his word. People have been raised from the dead before. Yes, but, but they, 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 die they die again. They die again. again. So nobody's going to have this situation. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his hand upon me, saying, Do not fear, I am the first and the last and the living one. And, and I became what? Dead. And lo, living God, to the age of ages, and have the keys of what? Death and of Sheol. So here, by accomplishing death, by dying, by Yahushua, we're going to see a woke him. Now he, he can never die again. So the second death has no case on him. And it will have no case on us either. So one person, one person said, very simple, everybody, if Christ was not coming back, everybody's going to die once. Mm -hmm. There's other people who are going to die twice. So the people who do not make Yahushua their Lord or do not bow to Yahweh are going to, bow to, are going to die twice. And that's why it's called the second death. 
and he, but he has the keys of death and, and Sheol. Let's look at the second death in Revelations 2, verse 11. So on page 253, just right over there. He that hath an ear, and, and we got to remember, what we're taught today is nobody dies. Mm -hmm. And so this is so foreign to the whole concept of what we've been taught in, you know, the Protestant and Catholic faith. <coughs> People's souls are someplace else and their body's going to be erased and somebody's being tortured in hell. You're in a better uh, place now. Yeah, or there's somebody's in heaven. The earth, you know, the new earth isn't even talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, heaven is where everybody's looking for and it's none of the, there's nothing in here about any of that. Mm -hmm. it, it's talking about the second death. 11. And he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the assemblies. He that overcometh in, the, in this period of time shall in no wise be injured by reason of the second death. And we go to uh, chapter 20 of Revelation. Verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and sentences of judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them who had been beheaded because of the witness of Yahushua, and because of the word of Yahweh, and such as had not done homage unto the wild beast. This is very good. So the people who did do homage have been benefited. The people who did not do homage to Yahweh are going to experience the second death. Mm -hmm. Or unto his image, nor had received a mark upon their forehead or upon their hand, and they lived. Here's your gut. They lived. Why? Because of Yahushua dying in order that they could live and reign with the Christ for a thousand years. The rest of the dead lived not until the thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection. Happy and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection upon these. What? The second death. second death. Let's speak up. Anybody here? Hello? Hey, hey. Got his glasses. <laughs> okay, that, that's all right. <laughs> we give up. No, 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 no. That's all right. That he hath part in the first resurrection upon these, the second death hath no authority, but they shall be priests of Yahweh and of, and of the Christ, and shall reign with him for a thousand years. In verse 11, uh, goes on, And I saw a great white throne, and him that was sitting thereon, from whose face fled the earth and heaven, and place was not found for them. And I saw the dead. The, you know, there's nobody dead. Yeah. According to the Christian church, there's nobody dead. And they're automatically judged. It's just so, it's just so uh, contradictory of this whole book. Mm -hmm. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and the books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of the things written in the book according to their what? Works. Well, works don't matter, do they? Mm -hmm. I mean, now think about this. Well, I mean, where do you where do you get this information? You know, here you're going to be judged according to your works. And this and the seed gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Sheol gave up the dead that were in them. See, it's just dead everywhere. And so you're looking. I mean, you got billions of people, probably billions of billions <coughs> of people who have died that have had a chance and have an opportunity to <coughs> say, I, I thirst after righteousness. Redeem me. Redeem me. And that's the whole point's going to be is, what about they didn't know Christ, so how can Christ be responsible? So that's what we've got to reconcile. And they were judged, each one according to their works. It said it twice. According to their works. <coughs> and death and shale were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone was not found in the book of life read, he was cast into the lake of fire. And we know there, there's only three alive cast into the lake of fire. Everybody else is dead when they're cast into the lake of fire. And that's a whole other teaching, but we've done that many times. Either. That's why it's called the second death, death. not the second life. Right. How much time we got? Okay. We got five minutes. This is why 
the resurrection is so important. So we go to Acts chapter 2. Probably won't be able to finish. But. That's how crucial Christ dying and getting up. In the Gospel of John, it will say, I will raise me up. And it, that's obviously not literal because we know Yahweh rose him up. Mm -hmm. and so Acts chapter 2, verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Yahushua the Nazarene, a man appointed out of Yahweh unto you by mighty works and wonders and signs which Yahweh did through him in your midst, just as you yourselves know, the same by the marked out counsel and full knowledge of Yahweh, given up through the hands of lawless men, suspending you slew, whom Yahweh raised up. That's it. And we're going to see this over and over and over and over again. If, the, if people are already in heaven and people are already in hell, none, you know, not, you know, this is all foolishness. Mm -hmm. That he was raised up, loosening the, loosening the pains of death, inasmuch it was not possible for him to continually held fast by it. So death is that big of, of autumn. And in verse 32, the same Yahushua hath Yahweh raised up, whereof of all we are witnesses. Raised up, raised up, raised up. We're going to see in chapter 3, verse 14. But ye denied the holy and righteous one and claimed a man that was a murderer to be granted unto you, but the princely leader of life, you slew, whom Yahweh awoke from among the dead, whereof we are all witnesses. And that's Egeria. Yeah. Praise Yah. Uh, chapter 4, verse 9. If we this day are to be examined for doing such a good to a sick man in whom this man hath been made well, be it known unto you and unto all the people of Israel, that in the name of Yahushua Mashiach, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom Yahweh awoke, Yigara, from among the dead. Let's go to chapter 5, verse 29. So the whole book of Acts is, is the awakening, the awakening, the awakening, because the crux, or the Alpha and Omega, of the whole story of the sons of Adam is death, and this was the first time Anybody got loosened from the pains of death? And they say 5 verse 29. But Peter and the apostles answering said, it, it is needful to be yielding obedience unto Yahweh rather than to men. The Elohim of our fathers has awoken up Yahushua, whom you got into your hands, suspending him upon the tree. And let's see here. That should be good enough there. So Yahweh awoke Christ. Uh, as we know, this is the new body that nobody else ever had. This is the body that will never die. And it's called the body of Ruach in First Thessalonians, I mean First Corinthians. Never to die again. Back to the garden, undoing Adam's trespass. Now, I don't know if we have time. Let's just go a little bit of Romans 5. Acts Romans, chapter 5, verse 6. We're back down to shedding time. Seeing that Yahush, or that Christ, he being weak as yet, seasonably in behalf of such as we were ungodly, died. And scarcely in behalf of a righteous man will one die. In behalf of a good man indeed, preventure even one dareth to die. But Yahweh commanded his own love unto us in, in that we as yet being sinners, Christ in our behalf died. Because that was the price. That was the redemption price. That's why the Lordship is so important because nobody can save themselves. Yeah. You can, you did, you know, before Christ came about, you know, by your good works, you're going to get there. 
you're going to be presented before Christ, but the conditions are going to have to be that He is your Lord. Because even you would not be raised up unless He was awoken and He paid mm -hmm. the price. Because if He did not pay the price, you would never be awoken. Mm -hmm. But while you're awoken, because you did righteousness. It's a very simple thing because people have to ask, nobody ever, ever addressed these situations, what happened to the person in these islands? You know, these places, well, they've never heard of Christ, they've never heard of the Bible, they've never heard of Moses, they've never heard of anything. All right? And so what, what the Christian church has is just two places, hell or heaven. Mm -hmm. All right? And it's not by works, it's by faith in Christ. But if you've never heard of Christ, how can you have faith in Christ? Yeah. And if, if Christ was not born, how can you have faith in somebody who was never even born? And you, you can't make him Lord where he hasn't even been born yet. So he has to say, well, how does this work? And this has to be able to work to say, okay, we know good works are paramount. And anybody who, who wanted to serve Yahweh, the Creator, by doing what he didn't want to do, loving his neighbor as thyself, and fighting off what he did want to do. Yeah. You know, so he's wrestling, they've chosen to wrestle the old man nature and to put on the new man where they realize not to the best of their ability, they're not going to keep the Sabbath or anything else. They don't even know about this stuff. Yeah. So, they're going to have to be awoken, and with a person with that kind of heart has already made a decision that Yahweh is the Creator, whatever His name is. They don't know His name, but there's a Creator. And if this is your son, hallelujah, I'm bound to Him. Mm -hmm. Tell me the story. Yeah. Well, guess what? He did this and this and this and this, and then that's the reason you're talking at this particular time, and you're like, He's my Lord. Yeah. He's of course He would be. I don't want all right. If you would say, no, he's not my Lord, then you didn't have good works in the first place. Yeah. So, so that means you're not going to bow to Yahweh. Because Yahweh says, bow to my son. Every knee shall bow to my son. If you say, I'm not going to bow to your son, then obviously you're, you're good. You have, you have done just what Adam and Eve did. You rebelled, and you're going to be thrown in the lake of fire. You're still going to bow, though. Do it. Yeah, you but will you bow. Yeah, you won't bow. And so we have to look at it, so it has to be it very simply. You volunteered to okay. kind of sum things up. What about the children who never had a chance? Yeah. Well, in my opinion, very simply, and we've done this before, is the thousand-year kingdom, perfect place. The thousand-year reign in, in, in Revelation is that they will grow and they will get a choice, like all of us have done, as a son of Adam, to make him his lord or to reject him. And as we know, at the end of the story, you know, many people reject him. As the sand of the sea reject him, even living under a kingdom, no problem. They're disposed of. <coughs> so I just kind of jumped over the places. I won't have time to do this. So, the sun, the sun. You have a minion on the back oh, of your yeah. notes. <laughs> I was distracted when you first started well, teaching. Sure. Yeah, let, let the, let the Recycling paper, huh? <laughs> All right. That's some good color. Oh, let me just kind of sum this up, too. Let me see here. If you go through 1 Corinthians, you know, here's Romans 5, talks about the death. 1 Corinthians 15, man died, Christ died, uh, the sleep. In 1 Corinthians 15, he gyros all over the place, dead and life. Let's talk about the sons of Adam are enslaved and, and will die. So this is the beginning of the story. The sons of Adam, which are all of us, are enslaved and will die. All sons of Adam need a redeemer. There are two groups of people. Those that have had access to Yahweh's word and those who have not. And then the people who have access to the word, there are three groups of people. The ones who are before Christ, that would be Abraham. The ones after Christ, which would be us. And then the ones who are going to be after us when we're gone in the Perusia. Um, the ones going to be left behind. And the reason they're left behind is what? Why? Because they, they didn't make Jesus. They rejected Christ yeah. at that particular time. So life, we know death is automatically the sins of sons of Adam. So what is life? Life is before Christ was obeying the commandments. And, and that's Luke 18, 18. So people will say, good master, what must I do to get to heaven? Did anybody ever say that ever? Mm -mm. Yes. No. Wait. What must I do to get to get heaven? Get to heaven. 
Oh, and they get the hat again. Uh, and that's it, a trick this question. Is life dividing, sorry. Yeah, nobody ever said, what must I do to get to heaven? Ever. And that's what we did say today. They said, what, 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 what must I do to, to be awoken after I die? Mm -hmm. To receive life, age of mighty. What must I do to be awoken? You know, very simply, do the Ten Commandments. Is that works? Yes. Yes, it is. Sure it is. And they're submissive by doing it. That is faith in Yahweh. And if Yahweh says he's got a son coming, I'm all for it. And if there's a reason you're going to be able to get up because of your son, hallelujah. What's his name? I don't, he doesn't have a name yet. Okay, hallelujah. That's great. So we have before Christ, obey commandments. After Christ, we, you know, we've got saved and through means of faith. Salvation is through means of faith. That's Ephesians 2, 8. And that's for us in this particular age. After the parousia, as after we're gone, they have to be faithful unto the end. And so these are the people who rebelled and are going to say, okay, last call. Mm -hmm. And you're going to go through really hard times. And so you have to be faithful unto the end since you didn't opt out in the first time. And that's works. And that's Revelations 2, 10 to 11. Uh, so, really, the sons of Adam all die. We have one choice is the second death. Those who reject the Redeemer and rebel against Yahweh, they choose the second death. We have the other ones who choose life, age abiding. And that's through the substitutional works of Yahushua and his works. Um, and those also have to be the people who are born before Christ, even though they're coming through Yahushua because he's the reason that they're up in the first place. Yeah. Okay, I'll just stop right there. My Father, we thank you for these words, we thank you for this fellowship, and we thank you for your word that we can see with clarity your promises and, and discard the doctrines and the confusing, um, confusing that's all around us with the doctrines of men. And just discard that and just go to your word and find the truth there. Start off from scratch. So we thank you for that and we thank you for these words and, and for the uh, prophecy for the people who are listening and watching. As you walk in this world and you obey my word, you shall be rewarded greatly because my rewards are far exceedingly above all that you could ask or think. So to never be uh, selling me short, that I cannot pay off big dividends, because I, I pay uh, incredibly huge dividends. You are my sons and daughters who I have placed here to reverence me in order that I can exalt thee. So reverence me, and I will put you in, in positions of power, as I did with my son and the members of his body, in order that you may be effective in your work, and that you may spread my word, which set the captives free. Amen. Mm -hmm. See you next week. Thank you. I've been asking you to do